Lord, we've come to worship you. We've come to thank you for another new day. Our Lord, our maker. Thank you, Jesus. There we are, the leaf. Often as I break, let my whole life be expressions of your grace. Daily as I live, often as I break, let my whole life be expressions of your grace. Jesus. Daily as I live, often as I break, let my whole life expressions of your grace daily as I live open as I breathe let my whole life be expressions of your grace we cry of a father I'll be your name I'll be I'll always be your name. We cry of a father. I'll always be your name. I'll always be your name. I'll always be your name. Hey, we cry of a father. I'll always be your name. I'll always I'll always be your name. We've come to worship you, Jesus. I'll always be your name. Igba Timoro, Ishe Yanore, I am me. Morikbe. thank you because it's always a privilege to approach your word it's always a honor to learn at the feet of our master Jesus and Lord we acknowledge your presence for your mouth that commanded your spirit that gathered the word and Lord teach us your ways again today empower us from your word and transform our lives on account of sin at the end of this broadcast every life will be touched and transformed to the glory and honor of your name alone in Jesus' name, amen. I want to say good evening to every one of us. 
watching from out there. It's time for another Bible study. Amen. And you are as strong as the word of the Lord in your spirit. We are students of the Bible, believers. We are students of the Bible. Christians, we are students of the Bible. The Bible is our constitution and we ought to be familiar with what it says because it regulates our lives. Amen. Okay, so we want to look at the final uh, teaching in our series on Christian giving. Amen. And uh, I believe that we have learned uh, a couple of things since this series began uh, four weeks ago. So today we're considering when to give, when to give. Introduction. Having considered the biblical basis of Christian giving, what to give and how to give, it is pertinent also to consider when to give. When do we give? At all times. We have there Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 talks about times and seasons. The Bible says there that to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. So time for everything, for every activity under heaven. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. So you will agree with me, if you do the right thing at the wrong time, you won't get the desired effect. Verse 5. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to tear and a time to sue. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. In actual fact, doing things at the right time is a mark of wisdom. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. So there is time for everything. But as far as giving is concerned, giving is an all-time activity or should be an all-time experience. There is much about times and seasons generally in the Bible. In Daniel chapter 2 and verse 21, we see there that um, Daniel, you know, when he was um, extolling the Lord, he referred to him as the one who changed times and seasons. He sets up kings, he removes other kings at the times and the seasons that he has chosen. So he's the one who changes times and seasons. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 7, the Lord Jesus Christ replied to the disciples or the apostles because they asked him, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel at this time? He said, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the Father has put in his own power. You know, so God is the one, you know, who regulates times and seasons. That is Jehovah God. And um, uh, First Peter uh, chapter 5 and 6 there tells us we are to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God for he will exalt in due time. So there's a due time, so to speak, uh, for exaltation. Uh, First Thessalonians 5, 1 there, uh, Paul was referring to the church in Thessalonica and he said, but of the times and the seasons you have no need that I speak to you about them. Why? There were some signs they were to watch out for. So the Bible has a lot to say about times and seasons. Now, whenever such a time is identified, a Christian should give what is appropriate. Whenever the time is right for giving, whenever you see that um, uh, it is time to give, then please give. Go ahead and give. So whenever such a time is identified, which is all the time, a Christian should give what is appropriate, whether time, whether money, whether skill or expertise, whatever it is. As we have discussed in other teachings, Christian given two, uh, with the scriptures of the basis, Christian given one, and generously and cheerfully, Christian given three. Amen. Now, redeeming time. The Bible talks about um, us redeeming the time, that is, making the most of time. Ephesians 5 and 15. The Bible tells us there that we are to walk circumspectly and not as uh, foolish people not as unwise and how do we demonstrate that redeeming the times for the days are evil okay so let's see that in ephesians chapter 5 uh, from verse um, 15 it says see then that you walk circumspectly that you walk uh, uh, with wisdom you know not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil so what does it mean to redeem the time it means to uh buy up the opportunity that presents itself to us 
It means to make the most of or to seize every opportunity or time. It means doing what is right. Doing what is right. Uh, in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10, we see that, that as we also have therefore opportunity, we are to do good unto all men, especially to them who have the household of faith. So as we have the opportunity or as the opportunity presents itself, that's one way of redeeming the time. So when we say redeeming the time, what we're actually saying is that we're to make the most of every opportunity that comes our way to give. So in the area of giving, you know, uh, we're to uh, redeem the time, we're to make the most of the opportunity, we're to seize the opportunity. So regular offerings, that's one way of, of, of redeeming the times as far as giving is concerned. Volunteering of skills, you know, uh, being a blessing to someone financially or materially, these are all opportunities of redeeming the time. Amen. So we're to redeem the time uh, because... Um, the days are evil. We're to seize every advantage. Colossians 4, 5 talks about the same thing. Now, given to meet needs, there are times we give because uh, we want to meet a need. And that's because a need has presented itself. That also is right. So when there is a need and we give, we're still in line with the word of God. We're still given in line with the will of God. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Apostle Paul had a lot to say about Christian giving in chapter 8 of Second Corinthians and also in chapter 9 of Second Corinthians. Let's read from verse 8. And God is able, so he has the ability to make all grace, all grace, all grace, all grace abound. So all grace abound. When something is abounding, it is increasing. So God has the ability to make all grace abound towards us that we always have in. That we always have in. So we can always have. God has the ability to ensure that we always have. That we always have in. All sufficiency. Huh? Always having all sufficiency. Meaning at all times uh, we are in season. At all times we have and we abound. In all things may abound to every good work. You will agree with me that when all grace abounds towards us and we have all sufficiency in all things, we will always abound in every good work. As it is written, he had dispersed the proud. He had given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth. Who is this? The Lord Almighty. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower. Who is he who supplies seed to the sower? The Lord, the greatest farmer. <laughs> and bread for your food. Who supplies bread for our food? The Lord feeds the birds in the sky he feeds the uh, uh, animals in the ocean and the seas he feeds the reptiles in the wild so he's the one who makes us bread for our food and he multiplies our seed sown so no seed that is sown is left alone every seed that we sow is multiplied and is the one who increases therefore the fruits of your righteousness so now let me read verse 10 again now he that ministereth seed to the sower both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness so that you being enriched in everything to all bountifulness which causes through us things even to God for the administration of this service not only supplied the want of the saints but is abundant also by many things even unto God what was Apostle Paul saying the context of 2nd Corinthians chapter 9 was that the church in Achaia and the church in Corinth was one of the churches in the region of Achaia you know had a mind to give or to send financial aid or relief to the church in Jerusalem and Paul was addressing the church in uh, Achaia or the Corinthian church such that the Macedonians the church in Philippi and other areas of Macedonia will be challenged and provoked and they also could give and send relief to the church in Jerusalem so the context basically was that of giving was that of giving and we see that uh, as they gave Paul was saying if you will give you will always have because God is the one who ministers seed to the sower and bread for your food and he's going to multiply the seed that they have sown and he will increase their harvest or their fruit of righteousness and because of that thanksgiving will abound on their behalf by many people so giving is a sure way to making things even to abound on our behalf in other words amen Okay, so given to meet needs. Uh, a need is enough uh, indication to give. A need is enough indication to give. Uh, maybe we can quickly read Philippians um, 4 and uh, 16. Let, let's, let's see what Apostle Paul wrote there in Philippians chapter 4 and uh, verse 16. Again, the context was giving. And he said, for even in Thessalonica, he was addressing the church in Macedonia, now the church uh, in Philippi. 
which, which was in Macedonia. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity. So he was saying, you know, they were given to meet that need that he had. Now, a need is enough indication to give. For instance, if it's a pressing need in an outreach arm of an assembly or building work or to give relief or to help those who are, you know, uh, pre less privileged and so on. Yes, or to give to a noble cause, you know, whatever projects that are ongoing in the house of God, we can give. We can enter into philanthropy. We can give schools, build schools, donate libraries. There are always things we can do. Uh, the church in, uh, uh, in Acts chapter 11, 27 to 30, you know, some prophets came down from Jerusalem. Agabus was one of them. And uh, he signified by the spirit how that there was going to be a death or a famine upon the whole world. And the church that was in Antioch decided to send relief, to send aid, to send gifts to the church in Jerusalem. Yes. So it can be done and these things uh, ought to be done. Why is that so? Proverbs 3 verse 9 there tells us, we are to honor the Lord with our substance, the A part. You know, the, the B part says, uh, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. But the A part, honor the Lord with your substance. Whatever you have by way of material blessings, honor the Lord with it. How do we honor the Lord with what we have? By giving, by releasing them, you know, to be a blessing to humanity, to be a blessing to the work of the kingdom of God. You'll be honoring the Lord. So when we give, to building work, building projects, relief efforts, vocational skills, etc. These are examples or instances of giving to meet needs. Not that this can be done in cash, in kind or person. However, the meeting of a need should not be confused with a call into the ministry. You know, because uh, uh, there were, somebody was not available to do something and you are called upon to stand in for that person and you did it very nicely. It doesn't mean that you've been called into ministry. So feeling a need is not the same as heeding a call. A call to the ministry is evidenced with an anointing. Luke's gospel chapter 4 and verse 8, it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. You must be anointed to preach the gospel because he has anointed me. An anointing evidences a call. Amen. Everybody can preach, but it is not everybody who is anointed to preach. Those who are anointed to preach, the Lord does that specifically for such people. Okay, so uh, let's take note of that. When you desire blessings, you can also give when you desire blessings. So you desire for God to bless you, you can give. Luke's gospel chapter 6 and verse 38, what does it say? Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men pour into your bosom. For with the measure that you meet, with all shall be measured back unto you. Amen. So we, we see that you can give because you desire blessings, because you want God to bless you in return. He can't owe you. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 6, He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that uh, soweth generously shall also reap generously. So it's a direct proportion. And Proverbs eleven twenty five there says, The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he who waters shall be watered also himself. Uh, Proverbs 22 verse 9 there says, He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed. So you can give because you desire blessings. Our primary motive in giving is because we love the Lord and we are being obedient to him. We love the Lord and we are being obedient to him. That should be our primary motive for giving. But giving in faith is given based on the word. So we must always give in faith when we give. Because when we do that, you know, we're doing it based on the word of God. And whatever is of faith, you know, pleases God. Whatever is not of faith is sin. It does not please God. Amen. So Romans 10, 17 there tells us, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Now, not expecting to receive in giving is a sign of unbelief. Some give and they don't expect, uh, you know, to receive. That's a sign of unbelief. So we must ensure that we are giving in faith so that it can be accepted on our behalf as giving based on God's word in love and also qualifying us to receive the harvest. Amen. So we must give in faith and we must give with expectation. Now, not expecting to receive in giving is unbelief. We should therefore create opportunities. So we can always create opportunities to give. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, what does it say? It says, now he that supply seed to the sower both minister or supply bread for your food 
and multiply your seed soon. So when you give or as a giver, your sustenance is guaranteed, bread for your food. And then the seed you have sown will be multiplied and then you can enjoy increase based on your obedience. The fruits of righteousness there is talking about your act of obedience. So you can enjoy increase based on your obedience. That is what giving does for us. Not that you usually reap what you sow. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7 there says, God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also receive. So direct proportions, direct proportions. So we can apply all this to other kinds of giving also, apart from material giving. So when you show love, when you give love, you reap love in return. You, you give help, you reap help in return and so on. Now, let's consider giving at designated or strategic times. In the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy chapter 16, from verse 16 to 16, we'll read that. You know, uh, in the Old Testament, they had three major feasts. And they had to go to the place where the Lord chose to celebrate those feasts. And God gave them specific instructions about giving. No one was to appear empty-handed uh, at those times and in those places. Let's read. Three times in a year shall all thy meals appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. And that initially was um, Shiloh, you know, uh, uh, where the ark was, you know, Bethel, and eventually Jerusalem where Solomon built the temple. Now, three times in a year shall all thy meals appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. In the feast of unleavened bread, that was number one feast. In the feast of weeks, that was number two feast. And in the feast of tabernacles, that was number three feast. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Every man shall give as he is able. Ability was a factor. According to the blessing of the Lord thy God which he had given thee. So according to their, their status, their level of comfort or physical capacity that was another factor in their giving amen so you see that for those three major feasts which for them were their uh, uh, official uh, times of giving so to speak they were to appear before the lord and none was to appear empty and they were to give according to their ability and based on how the lord had blessed them now giving you know, is always relative. Remember the story of Jesus and the woman in the temple. The Bible says he sat opposite the treasury and was taking note of how people were dropping their offerings into the bowl. And he saw the rich giving out of their abundance, you know, uh, dropping it in the treasury bowl. And he saw a poor woman who dropped all that she had to live on. What she gave was so, so, so small wasn't up to a day's wages, was very, very, very little. But the Lord said she gave much more than every other person, especially those who were even rich there. Why? What was left after she gave was what mattered. What she had before she gave was what mattered. And what she gave out of what she had before she gave was the issue. But you still have much more, a lot much more than you don't need available after you've given, then you haven't given much. As far as the Lord is concerned. So giving is always a relative. Amen. Giving is always relative. So giving at designated or strategic times. So they had the feast of Passover. They had the feast of harvest or the feast of weeks. They also had the feast of tabernacles. At those three major feasts, they were meant to give. For us, we, we talk about end of year Thanksgiving offerings. We talk about quarterly praise nights. We're praising God. So we, we praise God also with our substance. End of year Thanksgiving. We're thanking God for a whole year and we're preparing for another year. It should be a major offering that we will be giving at such times. It's quarterly praise night like we do in our assembly. Every quarter we have a praise night. It should be a time when we should be grateful to God for the outgone quarter and when we should be expectant for the incoming quarter and with gratitude and gratefulness we give substance as well together with our grateful hearts when we give tithes as well uh, you know that's another designated time well the tithes are given after the harvest comes in or since we live in a financial world after the inflows of our finances come in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 8 uh, I'll read from verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. 
but you say wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings you are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me even this whole nation bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove now here would say the lord of hosts if i will not open upon you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing and there shall not be room enough to receive it and i will rebuke the devourer for your sake and he shall not destroy the fruits of the ground and that shall your vine cast a fruit before the time in the field see the lord of hosts and all nations shall call you blessed for you shall be a delightsome land see the lord of hosts so we see now if you study the old testament critically they had at least three different types or th three different types of types you know because uh, it was an agrarian system some tithes won't come in until once in three years depending on their their uh, their, their plant cycles their harvest cycles some will be yearly some could be half yearly you know you know so so but we are uh, in a financial economy now he said will a man rob me he said but you have robbed me they said how in tithes and in offerings because they were not bringing in their tithes as they ought to bring them uh, to him in the old testament but he said they were cursed with a cause for robbing him do you know in the new testament now you are not cursed for not paying your tithes because christ came to remove the cause the old testament was work based the new testament is grace based can i say that again the old testament was works based it was based on your works your deeds your doings the new testament is based on what jesus has done and so it is grace based now does uh, grace exclude tithing no does grace say the need for tithing is no more no why is that so tithing predated the law of moses tithing had been before moses was born but right now if you tithe you are tithing in honor of the lord you are tithing because you 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 you, you appreciate who he is and that was the principle of a tithe uh, when father abraham met melchizedek and he paid the tithes to him for the first time there was no law that said he should tithe then but he did it from within him job 32 verse 8 but there was a spirit within man and the inspiration of the almighty gave them understanding he did it voluntarily he did it willingly from within him it was it was to worship his king because melchizedek was king of righteousness and king of salem it was to worship his king hallelujah and it is believed that that um, Melchizedek was a theophany or an appearance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, before he finally came in the, in the New Testament. Hallelujah. So the one who received the tithe then was Jesus. And the one who received the tithe now is still our high priest. The apostle of our profession, his name is Jesus. So do it now with love, not out of compulsion. Not because you are afraid of a cause, no. But because you love the Lord and you are grateful to him for who he is. And that way you cannot but increase. And so that scripture in Proverbs 3 verse 9 becomes very real. Honor the Lord with your substance. So when you're paying tithes in the New Testament, you are honoring the Lord. And the blessing is yours. Now, apart from, us, uh, from within the context of assemblies, apart from within the context of assemblies, individuals and families can also do the same, can also give, in other words. So for instance, it's the dedication of a child, you bring your child to church for dedication, you can give a, a, a special offering for that dedication. You do a house dedication, a car dedication, you can give for that. Your child passes a major examination, you know, leaving primary school for secondary school or secondary school for tertiary institution, you can give towards that. Your child graduates from school, you can give a special offering uh, towards that, you know. Things even for deliverance from accidents and so on, you can give towards that designated and strategic giving can of course be separated you know you know there's designated giving because those are givings you make at designated times end of year quarterly you know they are designated but what about the lord delivered you from an accident that's strategic what about um, you just believe that there's a special seed you want to sow because you are believing god for a breakthrough in a particular area in your finances or in your career or in your business you know that's strategic amen so whether it's strategic or whether it is uh, designated all given is given we are only separating them to understand again again when do we give when you are led by the spirit romans chapter 8 verse 14 what does it say as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god don't forget in acts 11 28 to 29 agabus the prophet 
Thank God for the ministry of a prophet in the New Testament. Because you will see that how that ministry operated in the New is different from how the ministry operated in the Old. In the Old Testament, they had to go to the prophet wherever he was to find out a thought seer the Lord from him. No wonder he was called seer in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, there's, the prophet is not called seer. Who is the prophet in the New Testament? The inspired teachers and expounders of God's word. Those who rightly interpret the divine will and plan of God are no herald that they announce that to the people. So Agabus signified by the spirit that a death will come upon the whole world. The same Agabus was the one who tied himself uh, with a belt and he said, Thus said the Holy Ghost, the owner of this belt shall be tied like this by the Jews in Jerusalem. You know, and that was it. He gave that message and that was it. Okay. So we see that he signified that a death, the famine was coming upon the whole world. And straight away, the people in the church in Antioch decided to send relief, you know, to the church at Jerusalem so that they could, um, they could be a blessing to them. So they were led by God's spirit based on that revelation of the prophet. The Holy Spirit knows areas of need that we are not even aware of. And this is like God using one stone to kill two birds. Do you know that in 1 Kings 17, from 8 to 15, the story of our prophet Elijah and the widow of Zarephath, the widow did not know. She felt the last meal herself and her son had, they were to eat and die. She did not know that God had her in mind. She was not meant to eat and die. That was not meant to be her last meal. She did not know. The prophet was going because he needed sustenance. God was using one stone to kill several birds in that instance because he said, woman, give me something to eat. She said, I have nothing. He said, he said you have. He said, Give me water. He said, as you go, bring me some bread. Break some bread for me. She said, I barely have enough for myself and my son to eat and to die. He said, thus said the Lord, the barrel of me will not fill. The cruise of oil will not fill until the Lord sends rain. Do you know, supernaturally, Elijah was sustained together with the woman and her son. Amen. And eventually rain came as the Lord said. So God had them all covered. Listen, our heavenly father has you covered. And he will take care of you. No drought will overtake you. Your seasons are fruitful seasons. You will know abundance of supply in the name of Jesus Christ. But be a giver like God. Be a giver like God. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go on. So at times he uses one stone to kill several birds. We shall stop struggling. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3a. The Lord said, my spirit will not always strive with man. Because it's just flesh. So I'm, I'm not going to, so stop struggling with the Holy Ghost. You know there are times the Spirit of God is asking you to do something and you resist, you resist. God's Spirit will not struggle with you. God, the Bible says God is love and love does not insist on its own way. So he will not strive with you. He will not struggle with you. So the wise will simply obey him. The wise will simply obey him. And why is that so? Galatians chapter 5 and uh, 16. The Bible tells us there that uh, we are to walk in the spirit so that we will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. So for you not to be striving with the spirit of God, walk with the spirit. If you have a walk with the spirit, you will understand what the spirit wants done and you will obey him. It won't be difficult to obey him. Why? So let's, let's go back to Galatians 5 and verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. You shall not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Meaning the flesh which is always contrary to the spirit will be subdued. Let's read the next verse. For the flesh lost it or struggles against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And these two are contrary, the one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that you would. The Holy Spirit says, do this. The Holy Spirit says, bless that man in church with a complete suit. <laughs> Talking about a suit, I, 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 I'm reminded of a story. A servant of God said at some point in his life, he had uh, five suits, you know, but there was a particular uh, suit that he had that was his best out of the five, you know. And the Lord ministered to him specifically in his heart that the best of his suit he should give to a brother. And he resisted that, said, no, 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 I can't give him the best. That's the only, that's the only decent suit I have. I can't, it's the most expensive. I can't give him that. So he called the brother and said, I want to bless you. So he said, he took one of the cheap ones and he gave it to him. And the brother said, oh, thank you very much. And he said, yeah, you can go. And the Spirit of God said, not that one. I did not say that one. 
So he went again into his wardrobe, brought out another one, and gave it to the guy and said, hey, see, you have two now. You can go. And the Spirit of God said, not that one. So he brought the thought, guess what? At the end of the day, the Spirit of God said, not that one. He had to bring out the five suits. When the guy now saw the best one, that was when the guy exclaimed and said, wow, this is beautiful. He said, just go. He said, out of announce, he asked him, just go, just go. Just, I don't want to see you go. He said, the Lord said, you, now you don't have any suit? I asked you to give one. You ended up giving five. Why? Disobedience. <laughs> Disobedience. So he said he learned a, 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 a hard lesson that day. Amen. So whenever we resist the Spirit of God, we're struggling. But if you walk with the Spirit of God, you know, then we'll be able to do what the Spirit of God wants. So the flesh lusted against the Spirit, the Spirit against the flesh. These two are contrary. And the idea is that the flesh does not want you to do what the Spirit of God is impressing upon your heart to do. So we silence the flesh when we walk in the Spirit. Can I say that again? We silence the flesh when we walk in the Spirit. We can also give to provoke others. In 2 Corinthians 9, uh, 1 to 2, I think we can quickly read. You know, this was a story of a church uh, in uh, Achaia provoking them, you know, in Macedonia. From verse 1, for us touching the ministering to the saints, as touching giving to the saints, it is superfluous. That is, it is not necessary for me to write to you. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia. That Achaia, you know, Achaia, that's the church in Corinth. Achaia was the region, was the province, was ready a year ago. And your zeal has provoked very many. And your zeal has provoked very many. So giving is a way of provoking others to give. When they see you're giving, they'll be provoked. They'll be challenged and say, ah, if this brother, if this sister can do this, I also can do the same for the sake of the Lord, for the sake of the kingdom of God. So we can provoke others with our giving. Note that giving is also a way to demonstrate our love. So when we give, we're showing love. Uh, the scripture that readily comes to mind is John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. For God so loved the world. So that love that God had for the world was evidenced by his giving, by the action that followed. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So he gave us his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him will not perish. He gave. So giving is the hallmark of love. Second Corinthians 8 and verse um, 24. That's the last verse. Let's see. Wherefore, show ye to them and before the churches, the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf. The context was given. It was saying, show them the proof of your love. Show them the foundation of our boasting about you. He was saying, with your giving. So giving is a proof of love. It demonstrates love. Uh, Romans 5 and verse 8, what does it say? God commended or God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. If as individuals or an assembly, we can provoke other Christians to demonstrate more love to God, it is commendable. So whatever you do that will make men love God more, it is commendable. If it is giving, it is commendable. If it is praying, it is commendable. Whatever we will do that will make men love God more, it is commendable. But the context here is giving. We can also give as a way of life. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. It says, let us not be weary in well-doing. So we're not to be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So we're not to be weary in well-doing. Uh, uh, that's um, Galatians 6 and verse 9. Yeah. So for, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So don't be weary in, in well-doing. The same scripture you find in uh, 2 Thessalonians 3.13. It says, But ye, brethren, be not ye weary in well-doing. Why is that so? Matthew 24.13 there says, But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. The same shall be rewarded. The same shall be blessed. He will, he will endure to the end. Amen. So don't be weary of well-doing. Don't be weary of giving. Even though given for any or all of the above reasons are good, the best thing is to walk in it. So you can give at end of year Thanksgiving. You can give quarterly praise night. You can give to dedicate, you know, a child, a house, a car. You can give because God delivered you. But you know, we can also give as a lifestyle. That is the best. So it is to be a way of life. A way of life. And Romans chapter 8 
And verse 32 there says, If God spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he, not with him also, freely give us all things? Our God is a giving God. Our God is a giving God and he gives by nature. And he desires for us, every one of us, his children, to be givers like him. To have hearts of giving. To have hearts that bless people like him. Exactly like him. We're not bastards. We're children of our heavenly father. And whatever our father loves, we love. Whatever our father does, we do. Lord Jesus Christ said, he said, the son can do nothing. He said, whatsoever I see the father do, that I also do. Do you know we are to be like that? Because Christ placed us on the same pedestal of relationship. The same way he relates with the father, that's how he expects us to relate with the father. The same relationship. Can you join me to pray and say, Heavenly Father, it is my desire that I be a giver like you. And so from today, help me to give the way you give to give sacrificially to give in love and to give habitually help me to live like that for i know that as i abound in giving i will abound in every good work and on account of my giving many thanksgiving shall abound towards you lord teach me to give just like you inspire me to give and lead me along the pathways of giving and I thank you because in life I will never lack. My seed will never lack. We will know constant supply of abundance. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' name, these are fruitful seasons for us. These are fruitful seasons for us. In exactly a week from now, our 22nd anniversary will be commencing. We'll be in the flow of it. And uh, the theme is fruitful seasons. Fruitful seasons are determined by God. These are fruitful seasons for us. Can you plug into the seasons and receive supply after supply? The Bible says, and of his fullness we all have received and grace for grace. So Lord, we we'll receive of your fullness and grace after grace after grace after grace after grace. We we'll receive unending seasons and cycles of harvest after harvest after harvest for the furtherance of your work, for us to abound in your influence. Lord, here on earth, we receive supply, we receive your backing, we receive your provision, we receive your increase. There shall be no drought around us, no dryness around us, to the glory and honor of your name. And in fruitful seasons, there will be no sorrow. In fruitful seasons, there will be no mourning, no bitterness, only joy and rejoicing. So we receive that for every one of us watching in the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, you are there, you want to give your heart to Jesus. You want to make peace with your maker. Can I pray with you this evening on this broadcast? Just say after me, Jesus, come into my life. Change my life. You become my Lord from today and my Savior. You alone, Jesus. No one else. And Lord, I pray for those ones that you accept them by yourself. I break the power of sin and I break the hold of fear over them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive for them confidence and boldness in you to live their lives to your glory and for your glory. Take them by the hand and lead them to their wealthy places, to their places of joy and rest and comfort and peace. Father, thank you because it is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. Like I said, next Wednesday, we'll be starting our 22nd anniversary. Join us online. Join us in person if you're in Ibadan City. And you will be blessed. See you then. Bye-bye. Hello, church. It's been another amazing time in God's presence this evening. And we'd like to appreciate you, our online audience, for joining us again today. Ensure you always share our anniversary posts with your contacts and always spread the good news. You can give your tithes and offerings online. Details will be shown right now. We appreciate those of us who joined the intercessory team yesterday to pray online. God bless you. Precious Seeds for the year 2021 is now available for just 500 Naira. You can buy for your friends, family, and everyone you know. Miracle Service will hold this Friday in person and online. Service will start by 5.30 p.m. Tuesday 19th January, we're going to hold prayers in church towards the anniversary. The whole church is expected to attend. Prayers will start from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. 
let's be prepared to give our missions offerings this Sunday. And if you'd like to give online, account details will be displayed on the screen right now. Our anniversary is six days to go. Our anniversary stickers are still available for just 200 Naira. Our anniversary t-shirts will be distributed on Friday and to be worn this Sunday for the first time on the 17th of January 2021. Our 22nd anniversary theme is Fruitful Seasons. It will be starting on the 28th to 24th January 2021. Ministering will be Pastor Bridget Kolade, Dr. Lanria Deneko, Pastor Kunle Balogun, Pastor Shola Kolade, the Sweet Psalmist, and a host of others. If you'd like to reach us, please call us at any of the numbers which will be shown on the screen right now. COVID-19 is still out there, so please ensure you're mindful of our hygiene protocols at all times. Our rotational prayer and fasting for all activity teams are still ongoing. Heads of teams, please ensure you always coordinate on your WhatsApp platforms. The word for the month shall be taken from Tehillim 829. I'll be reading from the OJB version, and it says, for by thee I have scattered a troop, and by Elohai I have lived over a wall. Now let's take our confession together. This month and this year, I am empowered supernaturally to overrun enemy lines and overcome obstacles. Nothing can stop me in Jesus' name. Together we say amen. Ensure you influence someone positively today and keep the fire burning. 2021 is our year of influence. Thank you for joining us today. Please remain blessed. <laughs>